Today, I'm going to share with you how I recently prepared for my colonoscopy. I have had three colonoscopies now, and each prep has been a little different and has gotten better with time. So I think that is just experience and just understanding my body. And so I thought I would just share with you how I have prepped for my colonoscopy and how simple that has been and offer you maybe an opportunity to do the same for yourself. Welcome to today's video. My name is Diane Parham. I am the creator of the online course and community, the intermittent fasting for today's aging woman, where we take a mindset approach to intermittent fasting so that we can look and feel our best and live our most authentic life. So like I said, I just had my third colonoscopy. It's been the third one in six years. In uh, a recent video I did, I will link it here as well as down in the description box, my journey with my colonoscopies and how my body has healed beautifully over time. I credit that to this amazing intermittent fasting lifestyle that I have been living. Um, but the prep part of a colonoscopy is really the part that so many people feel very intimidated by. And I think it's just the random horror stories that people share probably amongst their peer groups or here on social media. I really have created the mindset that I use a colonoscopy prep as an opportunity to detox and cleanse out my body. Thank you to my insurance company for paying for that opportunity for me. I am not the kind of person who enjoys multiple day water fasts. I've done some 36 hour fasts. I think I've done some 48 hour fasts, but really I am an intermittent faster. I love to eat and I love to fast within a 24 hour time period. Food is something that's really important to me and the connection of people and socializing. And I am not in a season or place in my life where I feel like going multiple days without food would be beneficial to me. I'm a very healthy woman. I don't have any kind of aging ailments that I need to reverse. And everything's working beautifully as it is with just intermittent fasting. But for colonoscopy, it makes sense in my brain because we are trying to get everything out of our system and have a squeaky clean colon for our colonoscopy. And so multiple day fasting for me has really just made sense. And I like to be able to take advantage of the healing benefits of what multiple day fasting, water fasting can do for us on a cellular level and a healing level with the logic of what we're doing for colonoscopy prep. So I, I have to say this for, you know, precautionary reasons, but you should always check with your doctor. And if you feel like you need to follow the, the instructions that are given to you by your provider, uh, because everybody is different. And if you've never experienced a colonoscopy prep or you aren't someone who practices an intermittent fasting lifestyle, those guidelines that are provided for your, by your doctor are for you. I am not the average person. I've never considered myself the average person. And so when I've read over the prep instructions from my doctor, they just aren't logical to my brain. I am not going to go out and buy a bunch of Gatorade and popsicles and Jello and those types of things to eat to get through a colonoscopy prep because I don't eat them for very specific reasons, usually the ingredients that are in those types of foods. And so I also don't need the sugar fix to get through the colonoscopy prep, which is, I think, what a lot of the Gatorades, the popsicles, and the Jello suggestions for things to eat are for the average person who cannot go more than two or three hours without getting some sugar into their system. And so uh, this colonoscopy prep, the instructions were a lot different than even the instructions that I had three years ago. This time, um, my doctor recommended Miralax and Gatorade three days before my colonoscopy. And I read that and I was like, what the heck is that for? I think it's for people who just aren't regular and kind of kick starts the elimination process before the prep sets in. And the Sue prep is just a really concentrated magnesium, potassium, um, and sodium drink that really does just cause your digestive system to get everything out and moving so that you can get to that clear stage uh, that you want to be at uh, with everything that's coming out of your system for your colonoscopy. So this time I fasted for 90 hours. It wasn't all clean water only fasting. So I'll describe how that 90 hours went. Uh, so my colonoscopy was on a Wednesday. So I started 
kind of prepping on the Saturday before. Um, that Saturday I had my 5K, so I completed my 5K and I really wasn't hungry after my 5K event. And so I had some nitro cold brew. Then I didn't really feel like eating all day. So I didn't eat anything. And then that night I had a salad because I knew that that was gonna be the last opportunity I could have any kind of raw fruits or vegetables. So I was like, I'll just have a salad to kind of kick things off. Had a, I think it was a chicken salad or something that evening that I made at home. And that's what started in my fast was I think six o'clock on Saturday evening, Sunday morning, I woke up, I took my pre-workout, which is still allowed. Um, I'm still allowed to have that at that time frame for my colonoscopy. I had my pre-workout and I went to the gym and I did about an hour of low intensity elliptical work. So I stayed in zone two pretty much the whole time. And by about 16, maybe 18 hours into my pa my fast from Saturday night, I was already in ketosis. A combination of fasting the day, um, the night before, having a salad with some lean protein on it, getting his own two workout in, I already know that's all it takes for my body to produce ketones. So I was pretty pleased with where I was so early in the journey especially since I haven't been testing for ketones and I haven't really been doing anything specific to get in ketosis. My body just knows what to do when I do the right things. And so I wasn't hungry at all on Sunday either. I had some electrolytes. I think I had a sparkling element, um, which of course has stevia and flavoring in it. So again, not a squeaky clean fast. Um, had some water, didn't feel hungry. So didn't have the urge to eat, fasted for the rest of that day. Then on Monday morning, I was like, I'm feeling fantastic. I had some black coffee, didn't have any pre-workout um, and really decided at that point that I was going to go cleaner, right? Just water and black coffee. And I had that Monday, Tuesday and kind of a Wednesday to really take advantage of being in that cleaner fasted state, more of a water only kind of thing. Um, felt fantastic. Again, ketones were present. They were getting higher the longer into the fast that I got, which is why I felt so good. I had plenty of energy. I felt mentally and emotionally very stabilized. I um, had that energized sense of calm. So I felt really positive and really energetic and no hunger sensations whatsoever. The one thing I can say is on Tuesday night, I did feel that sense of longing for eating dinner with my family. And I think it was more the social connection that I wanted and to like sit with them and share a meal. It wasn't hunger sensation as in like I physically needed nutrients. It was more like, oh man, I miss this experience with my family, which is why I'm not a multi-day water only faster. I love the connection that I have with the people that I love and food. And so this is why I really have to have an opportunity where it makes sense to my brain to go days without food. And so other than that, I felt really, really great. My prep started on Tuesday evening at 6 p.m. Um, took the first drink of my soup prep, had my 16 ounces of water. Or I think it's 32 ounces of water you're supposed to have after that. Um, and everything was fine. There was nothing that felt drastic, nothing that felt like an emergency. I didn't feel like super obsessed with the process of what was going on after I drank the soup prep. It was really easy. Um, and then around four o'clock in the morning on Wednesday, I had my second dose again, drank my water. The only thing about the second dose that I felt, which I've never really experienced before was I did feel a little bit like my stomach was uneasy with the soup prep on the second dose. And I think that's just because it was probably had been empty for so long. Um, and that was fine. I just got through it. I just drank my water. I was at the clear stage, which is where they want you to be at for your colonoscopy very, very early into Wednesday morning before I even had my colonoscopy. So I felt really confident about going in for the procedure. And again, the prep part of it was really, really easy. I, my, I tested my ketones throughout. Um, I will post them somewhere on here so you can kind of see the progression of where I went with my ketones and where I went with my GKI because really GKI is what I like to track for the healing benefits of what is going on. Um, ketones were beautifully being produced, which is an indication that my body was tapping into fat stores for energy, which is again, why I was feeling so euphoric and so energized and so supported. I wasn't in any way starving my body. I had plenty of energy for my body to use as a tool. So from probably... 
Sunday night until Wednesday post-procedure. I was very clean. I used unflavored element as my electrolytes. I drank plenty of water and I did have some black coffee. I think I had some black coffee on Tuesday evening. I went and sat in our jacuzzi to just kind of chill out and had a cup of black coffee even that afternoon because I knew I was going to have to be awake to get through the prep process. So I wasn't worried about losing a night's sleep. Everything went really smooth. Everything went fantastic. I'd never fasted for 90 hours before and that was really just a miscalculation. I, my goal was to fast from Monday to Wednesday, but because I felt so good on Saturday after my run and I didn't feel hungry, I wasn't going to force myself to eat. I just took advantage of the position that my body was in with being in ketosis and being able to utilize those ketones for energy and, and not feel that need to eat. Hunger sensations were not present at all for the entire 90 hours, which is just a testament to how powerful ketones are and use that as an opportunity to just take advantage of one, a colonoscopy procedure, which requires us to empty out our gut and clean out our colon on its own through the process of preparing for the colonoscopy. That that makes complete sense to my brain. And to then being able to reap those benefits of what a deep state of ketosis can do for us on the cellular healing part. Refeeding for me was not a problem. Um, I just came home, had some water, had my break fast shake as I usually do when I break my fast, eased back into eating on Wednesday, took a full day Thursday of not working out and just, again, just getting my caloric intake back up. And so by Friday, I, everything was back to normal. I was back to exercising, eating regularly, all the things. I didn't have any rebound effects. I did not weigh myself per se before I started fasting and after fasting because the purpose of this fast was not to lose weight. It was to take advantage of the opportunity of a colonoscopy prep while also reaping the benefits of what an extended fast can do for me on a cellular level. So that's why I was fasting. I wasn't really concerned about any kind of weight loss at all. And we also need to remember if we are going to go multiple days without food, um, that is just also not putting the density or weight of food in our body. And then if we don't put anything in our body that's going to weigh anything, then we don't have the waste of that food, which is also dense, right? So it also has a weight to it. So if you go multiple days without food, your body will look like it's losing weight. But as soon as you refeed, again, you usually put that weight back on. So don't do that to yourself. If you're going to multiple day fast, I would do it for cellular healing and body repair only. Don't worry about the weight. The benefits of an extended fast or multiple day fast are delayed, right? They're like long-term down the road, future self type of things. So when we are fasting for multiple days, or taking advantage of an opportunity like I did to get multiple days of fasting in, the cellular healing, the anti-aging benefits, the DNA turnover, those benefits will occur over and over and over again in your future because you've done the healing and you will be able to take advantage of the healing moving forward. So what I always recommend is if you're ever in this position of being able to take advantage of multiple day fasting is consider what you're going to do in the future and some changes in your lifestyle you will make so that you can continue to reap the benefits of what your body was able to do for you during the fast. Now, again, if you are someone who doesn't fast consistently or cannot get your body into a state of ketosis easy, I would recommend following your doctor's prescription or orders for preparing for a colonoscopy. If you are someone who's comfortable with fasting and you do know what it feels like to get your body in ketosis, or you can test to see if you are producing ketones, I do think that a colonoscopy prep is a really smart way to kill two birds with one stone, prep for your colonoscopy, and then also take advantage of what multiple days of water only or coffee and water only fasting can do for you on the cellular level of healing and the future healing benefits that it'll provide for you. Don't be afraid of booking your colonoscopy. A colonoscopy is the best way to know how your body is processing life, right? Um, like I said in the video that I um, that I linked here and have linked down below, I have been on a six-year journey with what has been going on with my colonoscopy outcomes. I went from precancerous polyps to a lot of polyps to this time, absolutely zero polyps. And I do credit it to this really healthy lifestyle that I've consistently lived 
over time. You can, in fact, make lifestyle changes that will change the outcome of your life moving forward if you have the information available to you about the choices that you need to make, if you take your health into your own hands and you take your health seriously, you can make very informed choices for yourself. And it has been proven time and time again through people here in our community, through scientific data and just general gee whiz information that's available for us to Google these days, that intermittent fasting is in fact a tool that we can use to reverse a lot of these things that happen to our bodies simply because of the time that we have spent on this earth. And that if we want to change the course of how we're aging, we do need to make sure that we're making choices that will in fact do that for us. I hope this gives you some courage to book your colonoscopy. I hope this gives you some courage to get through the prep. It is not difficult. It is literally a detox for your gut. It is a great way to give your body a nice little clean out so you can have a fresh start over. I always make sure I'm very, very cautious and aware of all the things that I'm putting in my body when I am through with my colonoscopy because I did in fact just give my gut an opportunity to heal itself and get a fresh kickstart. So I don't want to put anything in my body that's going to cause me any problems moving forward. I hope you can take that away from your colonoscopy prep as well. Treat all of these preventative type of things or all of these tests that we have available to us today, thanks to modern medicine, as a gift. Do not avoid them. Do not be afraid of them. Take advantage of them and use them as a tool for you to make decisions moving forward. If you have any questions about anything that I shared with you today, please leave them in the comment section below. If you have gotten your colonoscopy, please let us know in the comment section below. This community is so good about giving people the courage and accountability and support system to make sure that they're doing the things that they need to do to take care of themselves simply because you shared your experience as well. If you have incorporated some fasting with your colonoscopy prep, I would love to hear about your experience. Always feel free to share that in the comment section below as well. Make sure you hit that thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button, and I will see you in the next video.